Welcome back to Techspin, and gaming is back with GPUs also coming back in stock. So we've grabbed another gaming monitor, the LG 32GN 600B, 165Hz for a good price. Word of mouth is LG is known for good panels, and this one is pretty good with SDR at 300 nits. And while this model is a VA type screen, LG does have a higher end monitor with a nano IPS panel. We might check that out in the near future. Be sure to check our TLDR to see our warning about brightness and HDR handling on this before you go. Also, while DisplayPort does support 165Hz or higher, keep in mind HDMI 2.0 maxes out at 144Hz, so you should plan to use DisplayPort if you want max frame rates out of your gaming monitor. And helping you get max frame rates for your gaming is our sponsor, Noctua. Noctua's Redux Edition offers premium case cooling with industry-grade hydro bearings and vortex control blade tip notches for supremely quiet and exceptional long-term operation, and they won't break the bank. Check them out at the link below. Just a quick reminder, you'll need DisplayPort to get 165Hz as HDMI 2.0 maxes at 144Hz at 1440p. Gamers and shopping sites often call 1440p resolution 2K, however, it's actually WQHD or Quad HD, whereas 2K is 2048 by 1080p, wiki link in the description. If you want to check HDMI capabilities, we'll throw in the link also for DisplayNinja.com, which has a chart about halfway down the page with HDMI resolution and max frame rate based on HDMI spec. And if this video helps you, please hit that like and subscribe. Give us a quick follow on social media. And if you have questions or find another great monitor or something you want us to check out, leave your comments down below. Any updates will be on the TechSpinReview.com companion post. So TLDR, the LG 32GN 600B is a flat 1440p VA 165Hz panel having excellent low input lag and one millisecond response with five gray to gray. The SDR colors are outstanding out of the box and perfect after calibration. Supporting FreeSync Premium and working with G-Sync over DisplayPort only, the menu is snappy and the 8mm pixel to air is pretty good. For gaming, the response time or overdrive setting of faster does best at 165Hz and normal does best at 60Hz. This panel's listed brightness is 350 CDM squared or nits, but actually delivers just 300 with SDR. This is not market standard as you'd expect the monitor to deliver normal SDR content at the listed value. Side by side with other 350 nit monitors, this 300 of course won't be quite as bright. It only hits 350 with HDR10, but the picture is darker, washed out with only vibrant colors matching SDR levels, and bright whites hitting above SDR at 360 CDM squared. This is not a monitor for HDR. If you're shopping for HDR, you need higher nits, and look for the high DCI-P3 coverage in specs. This monitor has none listed. But that's not all. Build quality is good, but there's a worrisome stem assembly, there's only tilt, no speakers, no dedicated power button, and they offer a lot of menu languages, but English was hard to find as it looked like there was just one page with no English. We were just on page two. Overall, this is still an excellent gaming panel with great 300 nits SDR in response, but better options exist. Whereas high-end expensive gaming monitors use IPS, VA still has its use keeping entry to mid-level gaming panels affordable, which is great for gamers who have just been able to finally purchase a graphics card. The LG 32GN600B goes for $360 in the US with a three-year warranty, which may vary by region. Not available from Amazon in Australia or India, we got ours for 9000 NT here in Taiwan. This 31.5 inch 165Hz edge lit VA panel has a matte non-reflective surface with a one millisecond response time, five gray to gray, HDR10 handling, <laughs> and 10-bit color, which is likely 8-bit plus FRC, as LG would likely advertise this was a native 10-bit panel if it was. Contrast is over 3200 to 1 versus the listed 3000 to 1, and the max power draw is 63 watts. Gaming, watching videos, and sRGB media creation is good on this monitor, with just 95% sRGB and incomplete DCI-P3 and Rec 2020 color spaces, according to artings.com. Viewing angles are fairly typical for VA, with blacks changing around 20 degrees and a brightness loss at 30 degrees both directions, but in real-world testing, the screen is still quite usable. FreeSync Premium is here, and G-Sync is reported to work, nice, over DisplayPort only. Terrific input lag at 4.2 milliseconds and 4.5 with VRR enabled at 165Hz. At 60Hz, it raises to 8.7 milliseconds, still great. As we assembled the panel stem, we checked out the monitor and build quality is great. 
There's no height adjust though, which would have been super useful with a monitor this size. Tilt is minus 15 to 5 degrees. But because of the design, it's a little scary to tilt up as the monitor screws on through this arm with only two screws. Most panels use the whole VESA mounting plate on the back or something similar, so when you attach this and especially adjust the screen tilt, make sure you go easy on the torque. However, the stand is super rock solid with barely any wobble at all. The LG 32GN600B has a 2mm bezel with a hair thinner than average black border for a total of 8mm pixel to air. At 360 bucks or so, having no speakers is a sad omission. The panel delivers 165Hz well over DisplayPort and 144 over HDMI 2.0 uh, connection with no issues. In the box there was a power brick, a Mickey Mouse power cable, and DisplayPort cable. This LG 32GN600B mounts with standard 100mm VESA, but you need to buy screws, and the 5-way joystick is centered under the LG logo at the bottom front, but there's no power button which would be handy for troubleshooting. With normal SDR content and gaming, the panel does very well. Colors are great with slight oversaturation and pretty good brightness with accurate white balance, though the color temperature is a touch cool. There's no sRGB mode, unfortunately. After calibration, it's extremely accurate, and check rtings.com for their full rundown and profile calibration. SDR peak brightness minimum is 280 CDM squared, though some less accurate modes may perform brighter. Gray uniformity is excellent with some darkening at the sides, however black uniformity is pretty good with just a little backlight bleed at the bottom of our display and no local dimming here. So this is perfectly fine for gaming, movies, and sRGB media work, though running this 300 nit SDR beside other 350 nit panels, it won't be quite as bright. We tested HDR using Netflix on our PS4 Pro at 4K and watching the Coastal Seas episode of Our Planet, and the result was pretty rough. Testing monitors at the 300 to 350 CDM squared level, with HDR we know to expect a very slight overall darkening with punchier colors and whites. However, it was noticeably darker with the HDR colors barely hitting SDR peaks and only whites punching a little above at 360 CDM squared. This is kind of like getting to drive a sports car. You're all excited about trying it out. You open the door and you have to sit on a milk crate and that's your experience. We recalibrated on PS4 three times getting the same result each time. Usually with HDR, there's that ooh when it looks good, but HDR has really poor color volume here from the incomplete DCI-P3 and REC 2020 color gamuts. So don't buy this for HDR. Furthermore, the model up from this, the LG 32 GP850B you'd figure with its nano IPS panel would deliver a much improved HDR experience, except the panel hits 430 CDM squared across the board, and a competing VA panel, link will be up here soon, can hit 450, delivering a far more competent HDR experience and brightness, and matching this model's price. Let's get into the menus. Up and down control brightness, left and right control volume for the headphone out, not for the non-existent speakers. Straight press gives you power off, input, menu, and game mode, which gives you access to four out of the seven profiles. Kind of weird. Input gives an easy toggle, and power off works immediately for a two-step power off. Menu shows you Hertz and HDR on the top, but not resolution. Game mode has those seven profiles. Game adjust has motion blur reduction, free sync premium, black stabilizer, and response time, which are grayed out unless you're using the Gamer 1 profile, crosshair, and Gamer Set. Next is Picture Adjust, which is full featured, take note of the six color axis for fine calibration, and DFC is an automatic brightness adjustment according to screen content. Input has these options, and General has 17 languages, HDMI compatibility mode may work with sources better that only use HDMI 1.4, DisplayPort version is grayed out if using HDMI, buzzer, there's a beep when you turn on the monitor, and information gives you your resolution. In Game Adjust Response Time, also called Overdrive, Artings reports that the faster setting is best at 165Hz, and Normal performs best at 60Hz, and this also seems to match our subjective testing. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed, and click the bell. It supports us making new episodes, and you'll get notified when we release new videos. So the LG 32GN600B is a great gaming monitor. It has good color accuracy and the picture quality is also good, and with low input lag and 165Hz refresh, it's suitable for professional gamers, even though you may get some blurriness or artifacts in transitions to and from dark scenes. We tried it with PS4 Pro at 4K, and that looked good, and it should work equally well with newer Xbox and PS5. 
While HDR10 handling is advertised for this LG 32G and 600B, the reality is that monitors deliver SDR at the CDM squared or nits that the panel is rated for and then boost to get the added brightness for HDR, usually by 100 nits or more. LG, on the other hand, lowers overall brightness and shows full white just a bit above original brightness. This shows LG's incompetence with HDR implementation in this monitor, so don't buy this if one of the primary reasons is watching HDR. However, if you want to do photo and media content creation in the sRGB color space, this panel is a decent pick as colors have really terrific accuracy and outstanding accuracy after some fine tuning. After we found English in the menu setting, controlling the monitor was fast and snappy. However, we like it when we can check the resolution and hertz easily, a missed opportunity as HDMI 1 displays, but no resolution, and the main menu shows everything but this. The LG 32G and 600B has great build quality, except for the stand, which only attaches with two screws, so definitely go easy on adjusting tilt and placing down the monitor. This is a solid gaming and mixed use monitor. Though the lack of speakers sucks at the $360 price tag, most gamers will likely rock a headset or a speaker USB mic setup. However, in the less is more category, LG gets points for having no splash screen, which we usually try to disable anyways. So well done LG for not including that. One huge credit we'll give to LG is that the menu doesn't require a live input for access, and we wish more monitors did this. On most, if you're troubleshooting, especially with HDMI wires, most will give you momentary menu access before hardware turning off the panel, but this LG stays on and you have unlimited time. This is a very nice feature, which we really appreciate. And for camera usage, this monitor does accept 4K at 24 frames, popping up a dialogue to tell you about the resolution mismatch, which we really appreciate. This is great for reviewing footage in an emergency, and we tested this with a Lumix G9. So to summarize, yes, the LG 32G and 600B 165Hz is a good gaming monitor with lots going for it if you never need to use HDR. However, if you're doing media creation and are looking for a good affordable screen, we'll throw the link up top right for recent monitors we've tested. Our favorite is the Acer 4K, but the Samsung is likely an easier to find option. If you do decide to pick one of these up, shopping through our affiliate links below will help us here with no extra cost to you. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Techspin Review and there's companion posts to our reviews on techspinreview.com. A big thanks to Noctuo for being our sponsor again this episode. We're using their high static pressure fans to cool the hard drives in our fractal defined R5 NAS build, link up top right, and they're perfect for cooling your rig, and you can check them out at the link below. So what game are you playing right now? Maybe some Fortnite or Elden Ring? Did you find a good monitor or a sweet deal that you wanna share? Join the discussion in the comments. And we're interested to hear what you want to see reviewed. So please take a second to hit like, subscribe and bell, and we read and reply to a lot of comments. So if you have a question or if we miss something, please tell us down below. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.